Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. There's a number of, of interesting new drugs, if you will, um, that you can use in the salvage therapy of patients with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Liposomal vincristine is a sphingomyelin cholesterol-based nanoparticle formulation of vincristine, which really was designed based on dosing of pharmacokinetic restrictions with vincristine per se, but it relies obviously on vincristine as the active um, drug. Um, it has been approved a few years back uh, by the FDA based on actually a single arm phase two study. Um, uh, and I forgot the number of patients, but the response rate overall was about 35% with about 20% CR rate. The interesting part of the study is that all of those patients were exposed prior to regular type vincristine, and about half of those patients actually went through a stem cell transplant before they relapsed. Um, so it has activity. Um, I use it as a single agent, less so than in combination with steroids. Um, it may be useful in some of those patients. Um, blinatumumab is, is a newer addition to the choice of drugs in, in relapsed acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's a bispecific T-cell engager. Monoclonal antibody is actually the first immune therapy approved in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It was approved in December of 2014 by the FDA based on an exploratory or expanded phase two study of patients with, I would say, poor prognosis, relapsed refractory acute lymphoblastic leukemia, 189 patients, and the response rate in the study was about 40 percent, but actually a high number of those responding patients, about 70, 75 percent, also achieving minimal residual disease negative status after treatment. Melaraban is a little bit of an older drug. It's a pure nucleoside analog. You may look at it more as a traditional sort of chemotherapy drug. To be active, it requires conversions into its era GDP sort of um, molecular structure, if you will. Um, it's a cytotoxic in a more traditional sense. It sort of destroys um, DNA um, uh, and seems to be very active in, in T cells as opposed to, say, B cells. So it's been approved in, in relapsed refractory um, T cell malignancy. is not necessarily restricted to T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, but it also has some interest actually in, in frontline combinations uh, in patients with T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So any one of those drugs has its role. It, it's really hard and almost impossible to say whether there's any ideal sequence in which to give those drugs. I think it's way out there. There's no study at all you can kind of um, rely on or kind of base your opinion on. But, but all of them have activity and have their place. There are also options of, of more traditional chemotherapy combinations of drugs which are not necessarily used frontline. For instance, chlorpherabin is used in, in pediatric, maybe more than adult acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And there's chemotherapy combinations that, that may still have their value in, in some situations, yes.